toilet or water is very important to just about every area of the uh, the world and to the Dene it's no different. <laughs> Among the oral history of our people, we have stories of the uh, Dene when they first came into the uh, area that became known as Denebikea. And when they approached from the east, they noticed the Rocky Mountains where they had come from. They had, didn't have these, uh, the high hills and that that uh, are the Rocky Mountains. But uh, they call them Topatatasket, which means the hills of water. And uh, Sometimes when I hear the story told today, they say Topatayskit, which is only giving one singular hill. But when I originally heard it, they say Topatayskit. So from that Topatayskit, there are four rivers that flow in the four directions. But the uh, idea there is that uh, they were identifying the continental divide where two rivers flow to form the Colorado River and two rivers flow to form the present-day Rio Grande. And the uh, story is that as they came into the area, they began to follow the rivers. And whenever Dene talk about the location they are at, they always say Deco, which is the direction that the water flows from, and Yago is where the direction where the water flows away from them. And so it is that uh, Deco Yago was very important, even to this day, whenever you go into any area of the Navajo Nation, they will say to you Deco, which means to where the water is flowing from, and then Yago is to where the uh, water is flowing away from you. The uh, Dene, when they came into the area, it is always necessary to understand that all of the people that they encountered when they came into this area is that people lived near a source of water everywhere. Down into the, in the bottom of the canyons there were hundreds of settlements of different uh, people and they farmed the, uh, the land area down in the river bottom. And I have relatives here that, that lived here and they lived down in, uh, in the canyons along the river and they harvested all kinds of uh, food stuff and uh, they lived there for uh, several generations. And so fi until finally the uh, rivers and that were being dammed and uh, the conservation projects and that, and they had to move out from those places that they had occupied for gen generations. But the other thing too is that even today, when you look at the uh, Dene, the clan system, the clans, for example, I'm Torichini, which means I am of the Bitterwater people. But there are people they call Bipatoni, which is the uh, Deer Springs, and um, other clans in that that have names, Tohan uh, or some other names, you know, the Near Water. And um, all of these different clan families, there's about maybe 20 of them that have names in that that uh, refer to water. And the early settlements in that, that uh, of Native people, all of them were near water source and a good water source. So when you actually look out in the desert and in the, the dry high plateau area here, the people wonder how do these uh, native people live and occupy these areas? There's n nothing that, uh, that they see, but there's really a lot of uh, areas in that that used to have an abundance of water. You look at the present day Tuba City. Tuba City, Tonanestiza, uh, is what it is called. And all of that area was farmed area because there were so many different uh, flowing water in various directions and it covered a large area. And so it was a web of small streams all over the place. So they called it Tonanestiza. The other area is uh, over in Kayenta, which is the correct, correct pronunciation is Kayente is the, uh, the name of it. And that area also has had lots of water in that, that uh, they were able to form the area. And a lot of water was available and the uh, stories of the, the areas in that that had water available for all of the many people that would occupy that particular portion of land. But there's also in modern times, when I say modern times, I would be referring to the, um, the latter part of 1930 and uh, in the early 1940s, where the uh, government began to build dams on these uh, rivers. And specifically here in this area, you know, we have the Glen Canyon Dam and down further below, we have the Boulder Dam. And then even further down, there are some other smaller dams on that 
on the Colorado. And all of these dams, even as you uh, go further up, you have the Green River, and you have the Flaming Gorge Dam, and some other dams than that on these rivers. But the thing about it that a lot of people don't realize is that every dam that is built on any of these rivers, it is built just below Native American reservations. The water is back up onto Indian lands. You see that in the, uh, on the Missouri and some of these other rivers over in the uh, central part of the United States. You have the Big Bend at uh, Fort Thompson. And as you go up into the Standing Rock Reservation, you have all these dams. You have the same thing on the Columbia and the Yakima River. All these dams back up onto Indian land. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but that's the way it is. But here on the reservation, we are not allowed to even remove one bucket of water from Lake Powell. We are to understand that that is no longer our water. But the old people say half of the river was originally ours as it flowed through here. And they're still very much uh, concerned about the, uh, the lack of water that we can get from the Colorado. And so the idea that water is very important to our people, to, even to this day, our people have to haul their water in barrels and that to have water for their homes or culinary use. And so the uh, teachings of our people is always that water, to, is what it's called. To, is very important to our body and to our environment. And so the uh, teachings about water is very important among our people even to this day. And those are the things that we are told. Yeah, yeah, yeah,